Oh yeah, it's the weekend, and you know what that means. It's time for the most entertaining hour of your weekend. It's time for Pixels and Bits on TheOvershield.com. With your hosts, Corey, Andrew, and Tommy. And now broadcasting from planet Earth, it's time for Pixels and Bits. Bits on TheOverShield.com. My name is Corey. Hi! Welcome to episode 36 of Pixels and Bits on TheOverShield.com. I am your awesome host, Corey. And I am joined by my co-hosts, Tommy and Manny. Say hi, guys. Hello! Hello, world. (laughs) (laughs) Derpy as always. Derpy as always, Manny. Anyways, it is now it's time to jump into the news desk. Hit the music! I think that worked out pretty well. Yes. <laughs> Anyways, first story, uh, we got some Nintendo related stuff. Uh, this one's kind of funny on Nintendo's part. Okay, so if you go to your web browser and you type in Wii U.com, what comes up? Well, you want me to do that right now? Good question. Yeah. Yeah, d- yeah it's a good. Yeah. So Wii U.com. Dot com. No hyphens or spaces? Huh, it uh, looks like I got a Wii U. It's it's not the it, Nintendo website. It doesn't, no, it's not. And here's the thing, Nintendo couldn't get the rights to Wii U.com. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it's, it is something else. It, it's for free online yeah. games. You can play game online. You can download Nintendo Wii games, Mario Brothers Basically, U. Yeah. So, someone is squatting on the Wii U name. <laughs> That's They're going to make a lot of money, or they're going to get in a lot of legal trouble. Well, in this case, they got into a bit of legal trouble, because Nintendo filed a cyber-squatting complaint back in February to the World Intellectual Property Organization um, against the person who registered the name before them. The WIPO posted its ruling on this sat- on Saturday... And to everyone's surprise, they did not pick Nintendo. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, which is weird because game companies tend to win such cases pretty easily. Um, but here's the reason. Um, it's because of whoever registered the name did so back in January of 2004. Oh, so this is be way before they even announced. This is before the Wii, Wii U was even... A, this is before the Wii was even a thing. Yeah. So this person is either psychic, or he's like the next fucking Bill Gates and he doesn't know it. (laughs) (laughs) Now, apparently Nintendo has had um, chances to negotiate, and every time it's fallen through. Uh, Man, that's kind of shitty for Nintendo. Wait, so they can't use .NET? Uh, who uses .NET? Oh, yeah, see. that's like for networks and stuff. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. Anyways, who here remember? Okay, speaking of more of Nintendo, who here remembers uh, what happened at E3 2009 when they announced the Vitality Sensor? I, I don't remember that. Uh, you guys really I'm don't remember the, the Vitality that Sensor? One. It's something you. It was a. It was an attachment for a Wiimote that you put on your finger and measured your heartbeat. They pushed the hell out of this during their conference. Really? Yeah. Yeah. No memory. And it, and it be, yeah. And it, guess what? Ever since then, nobody's heard of it. So somebody asked Satoru Iwata what happened, and Iwata explains that the reason it didn't ship is because it didn't work for everybody. Out of a hundred people. 10% wouldn't be able to use the sensor. <laughs> so 10 people didn't have a heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> now, so Nintendo said they would have considered releasing the product if it worked with uh, 999 people out of 1,000, but the success rate was just way too, way too low. 
And if you're one, as for those who don't know exactly what the vitality sensor is, it would have players stick their finger into a device which would detect uh, their pulse to be used in the game. So I could see it being really cool for horror games. Yeah, but you're actually going like, to be scared. <laughs> well, then you make a good fucking horror game. That's, that's what you do. Uh, but it's so hard, Corey. Uh, let's see. Next story is for Nintendo. Kind of a dick move on Nintendo's part. So, as of right now, Nintendo is the only game console... I'm oh, sorry, what am I saying? Nintendo is the only game console. The Wii U and the 3DS are the only game consoles right now that are region locked. Well, for next generation. Because PS4 is, un is not region locked, and the Xbox One is no longer region locked, and I don't believe the Vita is region locked. So, there's a petition to get Nintendo to uh, get rid of region locking. And it has received over 19,000 signatures so far. But don't get your hopes up because Iwata came out and said that Nintendo is committing to retaining their region locking policy. Screw you, Nintendo. So, just for anyone who's also listening who may be kind of like, what? Uh, does this mean that Nintendo will only be sold, like, for example, within Japan and the US? Or. No, no, no. Okay, who here doesn't understand what region locking is? Uh, you might as well sign me up. <laughs> all right, all right. Region locking is when I can only, like, if I buy a game, I can only play games on my console that are from the North America region. And if I want to play games that aren't from the North America region, I have to buy a console from, from another region and then play, that, play their games on that console. So if I wanted to import... A Japanese game and play it on my Wii U. I couldn't. Oh yeah, okay yeah. And and, and the and the and the DS was uh, very very popular uh, because it didn't have region locking on it, so people could literally import carts from Japan and stuff like that, and then they could uh, make mods to the carts to where it was patched in English. Right. And and that's and that's actually a big reason. I, I, I guess that's a big reason why they don't want to do it is because it encourages the modding of games. Mm -hmm. um, which, you know what, for? I mean, here's the thing. I say, fuck it. It's like, once you put that game out, who gives a shit what they do to it? As long as they're not distributing the game everywhere or something like that, or pirating it or sharing it, why the fuck would you care whether or not someone was going through the code and doing something that they wanted to do? I don't know. That's my opinion. Anyways, uh, who here is excited for GTA 5? Uh, of yeah. Course. <laughs> yes. Yeah, everybody. Everybody in the fucking world and their grandmother wants GTA 5. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, not, Rockstar recently had something called an Asked and Answered, where they asked uh, people asked them a few questions and they answered and stuff like that. Uh, they talked about mu uh, multiplayer. They said that the guns... And the cars will be customizable. Mm -hmm. But they didn't say to what extent. Well, that's okay. Alright, so... But there's um, three responses that are really worth noting. The first one is that the Xbox 360 edition will have two discs, while the PlayStation 3 will just have one disc. However, instead of the Xbox the 360 version, instead of having to switch discs 15, 30 hours in... Because everybody knows that's like the world's hardest thing ever. I mean, seriously, people who come who may say, like, "Yeah, PS3, I don't have to swap discs." That's a fucking bullet point, really. <laughs> oh, I don't, I don't have to swap discs, really. I mean, is it really that hard? I'm sorry. I it, it, to me that's that I find that insulting. Um, kind of takes you out of the mood of the game, sort of. Yeah. Well, the deal is, is that with the two discs on the 360, the first disc is actually an install disc because you have to install the game, which is around eight gigabytes. Which is okay. At the same time, that's sort of preparing for you for the Xbox One. At least they're telling. At least they're telling us. Yeah. That, well, well, Xbox One, they got rid of mandatory installs. I know, remember? but at the time. At the time. Yeah. Um, but they said they recommend either using a 360 hard drive or, at the minimum, a 16-gig flash drive. 
um, the, the flash drive must be at least USB 2.0 compatible, which which flash drive isn't, and has a minimum yeah. of 15 megabytes read speed, which is actually kind of high for a 2.0. So you might actually be better off buying a 3.0, and that just works wonders. Um, and personally, uh, I would rather ha install the game on a flash drive because flash memory reads a lot quicker. That's just that's just my opinion, um, but I and I'm glad that they're based. And oh, and the second disc for the 360 is just the game disc, so that when you play, you don't have to swap or anything. So yeah, um, I think that's kind of cool that they're at least telling us this. Um, now, as for whether or not it's going to be on next gen consoles or even PC, they said that they're foc. They said, well, no, <laughs> no, they're not being released on any of those systems. For now, uh, Rockstar said that they're focusing on delivering for this generation of consoles before anything else. So, to me, what they're saying is, it's not going to happen now, but it will eventually happen. So, I, I, I don't, I don't, I can't see them not porting this to next gen consoles and uh, PC. This is too big of a market to miss out on. It really is. I mean, hell, if GTA 5 was a launch title for next gen, I, I could be, guarantee you a lot of people would buy it. Saying like, oh, what's different? Maybe slightly better graphics. <laughs> Sharper <laughs> graphics, but yes. Oh, look, no more jagged edges. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, I know this This might be a concern for you then, Cord, because how many gigabytes do you have in your Xbox left? 20. 20. Oh, I'm, well, that's how big my hard drive is. Mm -hmm. I have 0. 0.1 gigabytes of space. All right. Yeah, so that's... And you have the new Xbox One, right? You have the newest Xbox 360. Not the one they an announced at E3, but the, the Slim. You have the Xbox Slim, right? No, I have um, I have an original. Oh, okay. I, origi I, did my, I originally had a launch model, but that died a couple months ago, so... I recently bought an. I, I was able to get an older model though, like the original model, um, but with a fan mod on it, so it like stays cool and doesn't heat up like at all. What? Well, why didn't you purchase the and new? I, and I got. Why do I purchase? I don't know. Well, that. Well, the hardest part is that the old fl hard drives are getting harder and harder to find, and it's hard to find a legitimate one. I can't go, say go on Amazon and buy one. Because there's a lot of bootlegged copies, Corey, and they, and they don't fucking work. I have a solution for you. You may not like it, but it's an easy solution for you to get it. It's just you're because of your mentality. GameStop. I knew he was going there. No, I no, knew he was no, going there. no. You can get it for cheap, and they don't work. sell them. They don't sell them. Yeah, this, yes, not they do. Where I, not where I live. Oh well, I'm sorry, but yeah, you can no, get like, them online you know, too. Like, the, the GameStop's around my area. They don't, they don't take old Xbox parts. Yes, they do. I just sold mine a, a week ago, no, and I got $20 they, for they, it. I, I shit you not. The GameStop's are in my town do not take the old Xbox 360s. They will not accept them. Okay, well, maybe in your area, but hmm, you can surely purchase board. them online. I don't know. I specifically remember them putting up a sign or a notice or something saying that they wouldn't do it. Well, just check just again. Be, just because, well, just because they fail all the time. And so, anyways, um, <laughs> anyways, back to it. If you're planning to get GTA, uh, if you're planning to wait out on GTA and get it on next gen, uh, don't see them anytime soon. But I would wait and hoping that it comes out on next gen consoles and then buy it. Uh, this is my advice: I would buy it for PS4. Because nobody's gonna buy an Xbox One. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on. Come on, I, I, you well, know, I, I think I'm the only one. Well, nobody, nobody that has, nobody that like is. Damn it! I'm trying to do this without hurting you, Tommy. I just go for it. <laughs> I'm going to anyways. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's an interesting uh, piece that they're talking about. Um, they talked about map size for the game. Now they said, when asked or not whether be the map will be included in all versions, because their limited edition showed like, hey, you get a map of the of the city, 
Well, Rockstar said that all of versions will receive a double-sided map. Why double-sided? They said the game is just that big. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and uh, they also revealed how... Okay, you know how GTA V, you have uh, three protagonists. Yes. Right, right. Uh, they said that the game mecha the, the mechanic with that is that you can switch between them at any time. And while you say, like, oh, I'm going to switch over to uh, Michael. Well, guess uh, I switch over from Trevor to Michael. Well, guess what? Trevor's going to go do his own thing. So if I switch back to Trevor, who the fuck knows what he's going to be doing? Yeah. He, he could be robbing a bank. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Which I think is a really cool mechanic, but goddamn, I bet that would lead to some frustrating moments like, oh, I'm just taking a cruise. You know what? I wonder what Trevor's up to. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I could just see that ending badly, but you know what? I don't care. That just sounds awesome. Yeah, yeah. Plus, I I could switch. I could switch between a ghetto black guy or a rich white guy or a crazy ass white guy. Yeah. No, I uh, read somewhere that the switching component, especially on some missions, it'll come in handy, especially if you want to switch between the sniper position versus the guy manning the chopper versus the guy actually robbing the bank. So I thought that was an interesting take or approach. Which is, which is coordinated. <laughs> uh, I think, the, I, you know, now that it kind of adds to the possibility like GTA 6 or whatever, will like incorporate, say, like the watchdogs or um, the division mechanic where like it's just an, a continuous multiplayer world where players can drop in and out. So, yeah. like, your friends could drop in and they can take control of Trevor or something like that, yeah. But I can see that being so... <laughs> I can see that goes so wrong. <laughs> That's, it's, 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 it's the, here's the great thing about it. The moment you introduce uh, a second player into a game, while there's a lot of great to it, like, it's like, oh, you can do all these. You can They can cooperate. There's a lot of bad things that happen. Who knows? Maybe your friend's going to turn around and, like, torch every citizen on the block and it's going to be chased by SWAT fans and then he leads him to your house and you get chased by SWAT fans and yeah see that's why it'll be so much fun exactly but it's so, it'll be so chaotic and I love it <laughs> I don't know I mean like it, it reminds me of the um oh the uh the PC multiplayer for Just Cause 2 which is literally like okay here's the island of Pinal and everybody's Rico, and there's like 800 Ricos running around causing mayhem. <laughs> it's fucking insane. <laughs> You'll see like lines of helicopters just going at each other. So like the first one start, the first one blows up, and the second one blows up, third one blows up because they're all trying to kill each other. It's pretty funny to watch. Anyways, I've been rambling on way too long. I'm sorry. Uh, moving on. Uh, I. Tommy, I'm kind of remember. I think I talked with you about this, or did we already talk about this? Um, about Kingdom Hearts uh, having to be remade. Uh yeah, I I mentioned that last week. Yes. Yes. Um. So so. Essentially, yeah. That I was you pointed that out, and actually, I found the story. It was, which what's really weird is that this story was posted only a couple days ago. So I don't know how you got it. I got um, it from IGN. Well, fuck. Game drive <laughs> slow as hell. <laughs> and, anyways, uh, yeah. It's, uh, when we when Square Enix was making the Final Kingdom, I'm sorry. What am I saying? Final Fantasy. Fuck. I'm so tongue tied today. It's a Square Enix game. It's okay. Uh, it's a Japanese game. Names don't matter. <laughs> and that includes uh, all of them. All of them. <laughs> Kingdom Hearts 1.5 HD remakes had to be mostly remade from scratch. And that's because they lost the original source files for Kingdom Hearts. Are you serious? So, yes, they lost the original... They, yeah, they lost the original master assets for Kingdom Hearts. So the team was forced to, find, to get physical copies of the game and rip out all the code of that and then rebuild it from scratch. Hmm... And I'm just like, damn, that's a lot of work. I'm hoping this sells well. So there's going to be a Kingdom Hearts 2.5 HD remake. Because Kingdom Hearts 2 is the shit. And it will come up for uh, Xbox One. <laughs> actually, that's the... Now, here's the thing. They um, is From what I understand, the Kingdom Hearts 
and the 2.5 that's actually, I believe, is now in pre-development. Uh, Sony has exclusive rights to that. They be- they bought the exclusivity of that. Mm-hmm. So, which is to, which is why I was saying uh, a few episodes ago, I don't see the point of buying Kingdom Hearts three on Xbox One when I it's, when, uh, because if I couldn't have un- uh, played uh, Kingdom Hearts one and two in the first place because there are Sony exclusives. Well, I got YouTube for that, Corey. <laughs> it's it's not the same. It really isn't. I, <laughs> At least I don't know really the story. You guys. Huh? Wait, for me or Manny? Is that Manny? What he oh. talked. Oh, yeah, Manny, what was it? I was just saying, either that or the strategy guys, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at least but... I know the story if I watch YouTube. Sure, I won't get the feel the... of the gameplay, but at least I will know the story. Uh, yeah, but you're going to be spending hours. Corey, I will make time for it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're willing to set aside like 40, 50 hours, go ahead. <laughs> I will sacrifice my sleep to watch Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> go ahead. Anyways, so Microsoft, even though last week, was it last week uh, that they removed the DRM? Well, I think that was or, two weeks ago. That maybe. was at least two that weeks was, ago, man. That was, yeah, that was two weeks ago. Sorry. That was uh, the SGC episode, I believe, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Microsoft, uh, they, they, they're making steps forward, but they took a slight step back today because they confirmed that the Xbox one will not launch with a headset. That's okay. Cause of the connect too. Yes. Because shouting at a camera in front of your TV to talk to people is totally working. It, it, I, I don't, I, yeah. <laughs> but Corey, Corey. I could just see like little kids like playing their living rooms, and for them to insult somebody, they have to go bag it at the top of their lungs towards their connect, <laughs> and then it, and then your connect says, "Did you mean pizza? No, it launches the Pizza Hut app." <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, there's also a rumor going on that your 360 headset could work on the Xbox One. So if it's true, then there really isn't an issue That's, now, is there? Here's the problem. Is here's the problem. The headset adapter is no longer like one of those little like 3.5 audio jacks anymore, or whatever it is. It's a USB. Well, I, s- yeah. So no, you can't plug in your old headset. But it could. It won't. Oh wait, it just, just for the USB adapter. Fit. Well, there's a. They said that there's a rumor that they're working on an accessory to plug in, like say, like your old Turtle Beach or something like that. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. Like, I just don't. It just feels odd that Microsoft is kind of making this shift away from hardcore gamers because that used to be the hardcore platform to talk to a mic. When I can just talk to a TV, instead of hearing from through one ear, I can just hear fine through both ears. Just, well, I'm talking about with the Xbox headset, of course. But I mean, I can just shout it, which you're, is fine. You know, I can. I, I'm just I don't see an issue with it. I can just see this: if you plan to get a headset for your Xbox 360, for the love of God, do not buy a communicator headset. Hell, don't buy any. Don't buy any headset that just does like voice or whatever get a fucking invest the money get a fucking turtle beach and enjoy the wonders of that i got mine for fifty dollars three years ago and it was one of the best purchases i ever made totally worth it so yeah oh and more xbox news i think tommy you already know about this one maybe the head of Xbox, Don Matrick, has left Microsoft. Oh, PlayStation secret weapon left. <laughs> it is now the CEO of Zenga. Oh no, my face, I mean, my farm bill is going to be screwed now. Which means Don Matrick will say, if you can't farm, it's just like, what if I can't farm radishes and farm bill one, but I want to farm radishes and farm bill two? Well, we have a great game for that already. <laughs> 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 uh. 
See, I think this is a great step forward for Microsoft with him gone. I think it is because I think this guy was what was holding Xbox back. Because I think, let's see, he took over, let's see, uh, when did Don, when did Don Matrick take over? Now that I think about it. I, he took over about three, four years ago, four or five years ago. Yeah. Back, I'm uh, back. I'm guessing when they were, uh, already, that was back around the time when Xbox really started to shift is what is the, is about 2009, 2010 is when Xbox really started to change. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I'm glad he's gone. I did not like Don Matrick personally. He came off as way too arrogant. Or just way too full of himself. Like, this is... I don't know. It's... That, I didn't like the fact that he literally told people to not buy an Xbox One if you don't have an online connection. <laughs> if you're telling people in any way to not buy your product for any reason, you are fucked up. As a businessman, because really, I don't know. I I, I think he is the. I, I I really do believe he his miscommunication is what caused the Xbox One to be viewed so bad. Because the more and more I look at it, it's just like the more I see that more and more games are becoming more multiplayer, open, uh, con persistent worlds. Um, I could have seen the Xbox One being a great platform for that. But because of the miscommunication that Don and his team had, yeah. Uh, I don't know. You guys got any thoughts on this? I've been ranting on news section here for a while. Oh, that's fine. That's mm -hmm. absolutely fine. I, I, like I said, I think this is great for Microsoft. Um, people called him as PlayStation's secret weapon, you know, just because he just sabotaged. I mean, I really think... I mean, he just didn't sell the Xbox One. He made it worse, in my opinion. He, yeah, you know, he's a horrible salesman. Yeah, big time. Now, yeah. speaking, of, speaking of Zynga, Don's going to have to address this issue because an error turns some random guy into a customer support rep for Zynga. <laughs> <laughs> Basic, basically, when you're playing certain games, um, an error page will pop up and say, hey, you need to contact a, a representative or something. So this error page told to contact somebody who had an email address that was at themepark.com. His name was Eric Muller. And apparently, he's not a Zynga rep. <laughs> he doesn't work for, he doesn't have anything to do with Zynga, period. He tried to inform Zynga saying that, hey, you guys accidentally made me a customer rep. I'm not, please get rid of this so I don't keep getting emails. But he kept getting the emails and stuff and kept getting contacted. So, Instead of continuing to bother the company to fix an error that they caused, he ran with the, he ran with this idea. He oh, sent no. replies to players who had no idea he was from Zynga. Um, interesting ways to fix issues in Coasterville. For example, one quote unquote: I know that for Canada Day, the engineering department wraps the .ca servers in Canadian flags and then sets a plate of poutine on top of them. This can sometimes cause the server to overheat and sometimes get gravy into the login logout module. I thought that might be what was going on, but I checked with the Canadian server techs and they were telling me that Canada Day has passed without incident and the servers are all enjoyed their break and are back to running fine. It's <laughs> <laughs> <That's> amazing! <laughs> <laughs> oh, this it gets even better. Here's another one. <laughs> Quote, unquote, this is actually a known issue with Coasterville with, a, with the Coasterville server. And I have a solution from our engineering team. It's a little bit strange, but here's how it works. You need to go to five of your Facebook friends and post this message on their wall. I love brown bears folding chairs and curly hairs. <laughs> <laughs> so, and Azinga finally fixed the issue when this was posted on Kotaku. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna lie. I give this guy a medal, because this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Corey, would you have done the same if that happened to you? Hell yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
if I got in trouble for it, it's just like, well, you guys fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. What, what did you guys do it? Because this is just awesome. I don't think I'll be very good at it. Yeah. Y yeah. Um. You, you don't. You have a trouble. You have. You would have trouble with lying. No, I wouldn't have trouble lying. I would just like. I don't think I would be as funny as that. How that guy did it. <laughs> the candidate thing just cracks me up. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyways, moving on, moving on. Uh, next story. Who here is a f is waiting for the Bioshock Infinite DLC? I am. I don't have the game, so I can't be yeah, excited. Yeah, neither do I. Sorry. God damn it, people! <laughs> <laughs> you want to buy us a copy for it? I don't know. Do I look like I'm rich? Well, I mean, there is a huge sale right now for the Xbox. You can buy um, Bioshock Infinite for, let's see, $30, um, $40. So you save $20. Nice. Yeah. Well, all right. So if you remember, there was a rumor that uh, Bioshock Infinite, Infinite's DLC, the new one, will have like a new story with a new AI companion. We don't know if it's true, but... According to it, but no, so but nobody knows when the game's coming out. So, but according to Ken Levine, uh, the basically the guy behind it all, um, he says that deal quote unquote DLC update we are working on it have been since the game shipped. Things are going well, but please understand game development takes time. So, nobody knows when it's coming out, but there's a rumor. That they will make an announcement at the end of this month. Hmm. And the and if I remember correctly, um, this rumor comes from a source at Kotaku. Hmm. Sounds like the release of just Bioshock Infinite all over again. Yep. Except it gets big head mode. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but come on, you don't think that would be awesome? I don't know. Yeah. Big head mo Come on. God, no nobody remembers that. Uh, I remember that golden eye. I don't I don't. DK mode. I really? You don't remember that in like all the rare games? Turok. No, I I don't. Like Tur it was in Turok, Goldeneye, Perfect Dark. Yeah, yeah, I don't I don't I only play Goldeneye, but I mean I haven't played the others. Come on, like paintball mode, stuff like Oh god, Bioshock with paintballs. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyways, final story, a uh, quick little news announcement. Who here is a fan of Final Fantasy VII? Me! <laughs> I never well, played guess what? it, if you, a, if, you have, if you have a tough time getting a copy of it on PlayStation 1, well, don't worry, because you can get it on Steam today for $12. That's, That's nice. amazing. And it launches with Cloud Saves. Ha, ha. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> 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 I know, I had to. Mm. <laughs> it also comes with achievements and character booster feature. So, uh, which the character booster feature just allows you to boost your character and get past all the grindy bits. Which, I don't know, that's that's helpful. I enjoy Square Enix games for story, not for continuing to kill monsters for hours to get XP. <laughs> that, does, does anybody find that super annoying? Yeah... yeah. Yeah. It's just like, you are not a high enough level to fight this boss. You must grind for six more years. <laughs> just, I just keep thinking about that South Park episode. Well, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's just killing boars. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how many boars you'd have to kill? Yes. 6,300,423. <laughs> which would get, which would, which would take us seven weeks, three days, and four hours. <laughs> If we get three hours of sleep a day. <laughs> God, that, that is the epitome of grinding right there. Just killing boars. Mm -hmm. Or slimes. That's the worst. Ugh. Anyways, that is the end of the news. Wait, wait, I got one more. I got one more story news. Oh, you got one more? Go ahead, Tommy. Take over. It's about Fez. Oh! <gasps> you know, last week we discussed how, you know, uh, updates are now free on the Xbox console yes yes well polytron is finally gonna patch fez 
He couldn't before. Because it costs you know what? So I, I, much money. But now that it's free. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Because it costs so much money and Phil Fish is sitting on millions of dollars. That's right. He, 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 he tweeted this. Fucking cheap ass. I know. He tweeted this. Good news, everyone. We're going to patch Fez on the Xbox Live Arcade. There's no timeline on the patch, but if it, uh, Fish said that it's gonna take a few months. no time on the patch. You have been working on a patch this whole time? He's working on Fez, too. I know. It's gonna take some time. Fuck you, Phil Fish. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah, um, back in July 2012, about a year ago, uh, reissue, they reissued a patch which, upon its initial re release, resulted in corrupted save files for a very small percent they percentage never of people. They fixed it. They never fixed it. So, but that patch is gonna fix it. And I'm one of those people. I just got Fez and I played it. And after I beat the game, I I can't go back to it because the save file is corrupted. But now, I just have to wait maybe a few months. I, I got frustrated with it on the Xbox, so I bought it on the PC. Yeah. Which, Tommy, you can run it. I know you can. I don't know. I can barely run this Slender. It's because it's a 16-bit game, for Christ's sake. I think 30 Whatever. Oh, that, that's all I have. That's all I want to announce. All right, cool. Fuck you, Phil Fish. That's all we need to announce. <laughs> Please send us Fest 2, though. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, moving on to the middle segment, which is you, Manny. All right. You were not here last week when I discussed my little tales of SGC. Um, would you like to discuss uh, what happened to you specifically? All right, sure. Why not? Uh, because I know, because I know there was a bunch of times where you ran off and did your own thing. That it is right. That is true. Um, well, basically, when I went solo mode like that, the goal, point, the idea was to do interviews, you know, spot on interviews with uh, other attendees at the cons, you know, just to kind of get their scope on their experience so far and kind of what they were hoping to see. And um, kind of unfortunate for me, but definitely good for everyone else was I really didn't see anyone, you know, derping around, you know, sitting in chairs because there was a lot going on, so... Um, there was always something going on. Oh, yeah. On. And in a way, I mean, that was also... It was kind of mind-boggling because it's like there's so many cool, you know, panels going on, like literally like two or three really awesome panels that it's like, well, which one do I go to, you know? So that was kind of rough, and, uh, you know, just trying to squeeze in lunch in between them was kind of rough, too, but... Uh, really, though, shout out to the good folks at SGC for making it a blast for everyone. And, you know, making sure no, there's no, a little no. bit of make, make a Make a shout out to Sean Hines. That man is I a did. miracle. I did. Check out that article I posted. But, um, but yeah, um, even though that didn't work out, I did get to speak with one particular individual, um, Lewis. And uh, he was pretty much, you know, reiterating what I just said was there was just so many panels going on. He was having kind of some trouble figuring out which one he wanted to go to. But the thing was, he was able to narrow down the ones he did want to go to, and the ones he did, he was totally just blown away. So that was cool. Um, something maybe a little bit more interesting um, that was exclusive from my experience was interviewing the indie gamers, actually, the indie developers. And uh, what's really cool about those folks is uh, they're really, you know, interesting to talk to, very, you know down to earth and uh, very humble you know especially in producing their game and trying to get people into it and um, they have a lot going on for them in fact uh, some in particular like this one booth I checked out named uh, Osiris Studios uh, they're producing a game right now called uh, Mist of Stagnation it is an online multiplayer FPS and what's interesting about it is yeah so you think oh another Call of Duty another Battlefield no Actually, this FPS is centered around steampunk, which means a lot of the weapons and the gameplay will be, um, you know, tweaked more or less, not just, vis you know, visually, but physically as well. For example, you know, pistols and guns may be spring-loaded or maybe even require you to pump steam into them before you can actually fire them. So that in turn will affect, you know, any kind of strategy and gameplay. And also what I thought was interesting is they put a little RTS action in there by implementing, you know, traditional game styles like King of the Hill, Team Deathmatch and that. But they'll have an actual team leader who can use either the currency or skill uh, acquired by his or her teammates to then call in like these uh, leader specials that only the team leader can use, which, you know, can either make or break the match. So I thought that was interesting. So it's, it's kind of like commander mode from Battlefield. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, which I thought was interesting they kind of took. But... 
from the vibe I got, it was more like kind of like a special attack, not so much like you can constantly rely on this particular support or something like that. So you really had to be judgmental in terms of when you would use the power up. So um, I, I know you. You were after Cassie. Oh, Cassie, the um, sweet girl running the um, Electronic Super Joy booth. Electronic Super Joy is another um, indie game which uh, ironically looked a lot similar to Super Meat Boy. The only difference is there was a lot more colors of blue than shades. Well, it, it, it had a very uh, bit trip uh, uh, look to it. It did. Like, uh, you, yeah, if you ever play like Bit Trip Runner or like, something like that, it looked very similar to it. Though, it, I'm not going to lie, it was a little odd to like, like when you would die, you would just hear like a girl go, uh, and you just got to hear a guy just go, oh yeah. Oh yeah, that was, <laughs> and it had a, you know, awesome soundtrack that was sounded like an Abercrombie and Fitch door. It was like, <laughs> The, the guy, the the booth next to me, uh, next next to that one, said that like, God, we want to kill ourselves after that music. <laughs> they they said they heard it so much that it was just it was killing them on the inside. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, not the music. I'm sorry. The uh, and the oh yeah thing. Yeah, that was pretty crazy. Um, lastly, from the indie uh, table. Well, we, we've been. Well, I mean, you've been talking a bit about the indie table, but like. I know you went out and like did the cosplay stuff and everything. Oh yeah, that's right. That's a good, another good point. Um, uh, let's see. Regarding the cosplay, interesting uh, contest. Um, talk about bringing um, the best in the run. I mean, you know, popular costumes. I mean, it definitely didn't look like something you'd buy at all. It seemed like everyone there pretty much, you know, made their costumes from scratch or uh, worked with other people. In fact, I didn't hear anyone say that they had theirs commissioned, which is good because then that probably means they made it themselves rather than paying someone else to do it for them. Um, if you check out the article I had posted on this other site, oh yeah, no self-promoting. But anyways, um, the point I want to make is uh, I had some pictures loaded up where you can actually see the people in costume and it's quite detailed. You can definitely tell the kind of effort they put into this, and it's not something that's done overnight. So, as you would expect, for really, from any cosplay contest, but this one in particular really blew everyone away. So, and being that it's at it, that it is at SGC, I mean, that was definitely an added bonus. Which, for those who are wondering, like, what exactly SGC was like, it was very much like an anime. It had it was. It had the format of an anime con, which is a lot of panels, a lot of guests and everything. Because most game conventions like PAX or Gamescom or or whatever, even MAGFest, or, there's, a, there's a lot of... Uh, well, MAGFest is like one of those ones that has anime panels and stuff like that. But that's, that's a variety um, show, so I can't really call that a games convention. But uh, like PAX and stuff like that, that is more about like like uh big name publishers and stuff showing up and showing off demos and stuff like that there the 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 demos here was indie gamers and that was actually rather cool as manny was talking about earlier yeah yeah and um you know shout out again to sgc for giving those indie gamers free booths for the entire weekend which is really even some that's really really, nice yeah that is really nice even as early as thursday evening so they got four days of free you know setup and demonstrations so yeah, really cool stuff from the good folks with Screw Attack. Uh, anything else you want to add? Um, overall, um, the experience is really cool. I mean, you know, just you know, seeing other gamers and that, and seeing the all the other guest panelists. If anything, I really found myself, you know, kind of doing flashbacks where, like, for example, with uh, James Rolfe, you know, AVGN, Ang- Angry Video Game Nerd. At first, I was like, where have I heard this guy? Where have I heard this guy? And it turns out. I only knew him more from like his Cinemassacre segment on YouTube where he did like the top 10 monsters of the Godzilla movies and stuff. And then he also did one of like the top 10 um, amazing stunts by Jackie Chan and like which ones, you know, physically, you know, put him in pain the most. So uh, that's where I saw him. So, you know, it was one of those where at the whole convention, I'm like, who is this guy? Who is this guy? And then I get home and I'm like, oh, that's who he is. But definitely shout out to uh, Nathan Barnett for, uh, you know, being crazy as always. And I mentioned this in the article is that he, I thought out of everyone, seemed the most, you know, personable and someone you could easily approach and just have a conversation. In fact, he even came up to me and Corey was like, hey, what's up, guys? You know, and, and he agreed with Corey to originally do an interview. But fortunately, 
he, uh, Nathan injured his foot later on that night during his he, he broke his ankle yeah yeah he broke his ankle so yeah that was pretty intense but I'm, which is he said that was the first broken bone he's ever had doing stunts yeah yeah so, and he broke it at SGC. <laughs> <laughs> so talk about individual experiences. I thought that was really cool to me to not only meet the guy in person, but to really find out he is a trooper in terms of being social with his fans and uh, not being in, un, unapproachable. So I'm still I'm still wondering to this day, why was Nick outside <laughs> at the uh, <laughs> at the valet parking? I still wonder to this day. Oh yeah, really? Yeah. I don't know. I thought it was cool seeing him for the first thing and not the, yeah. um, what was it? The, uh, not the bellhop, you know, the Valley Parker. Yeah. Yeah. That was, yeah, like the first person, the first person in Dallas that we like interacted with was not the valet guy. It was freaking nervous Nick. Yeah. Yeah. Which I thought was really cool. It was just like, huh, it's different to see these people without a monitor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Anyways, uh, do you want to say any last words, Manny? Uh, no, I just had a great time, and you know, we really appreciate you, Corey, for taking me down there with you. I'm glad I was able to celebrate with a friend too, and not just by not just by myself or just trying to do it on the job. You're you're welcome, Manny. I have one question. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Michael Jordan. Oh. Yes, like he was there. <laughs> you said he was there. I forgot. Well, here's the deal. I don't know if that was more like let's add some hype to a panel that we know no one's going to attend. So, of course, I was the sucker that when I heard those two words or names, I thought, all right, sign me up. So I'm standing in there, and it turns out it was a no show. So naturally, I'm like, all right, guys, what's the scoop? And everyone, I mean, everyone in the staff wise, they're like, well, you know, you may have heard that in the line, but we can't verify that. So I'm like, Oh, come on, guys. You know, like one of those. But I don't know. Not really sure how that panned out or where that... Nobody knows if he was there or not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was just rumors. There was just well, rumors. that plus, it made no sense, especially for the panel I was going to. I was going to the, um, uh, what was that, that achievement panel where those guys, like, try to do as many... The completionist. The completionist, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I thought, how does Michael Jordan have anything to do with this? And I thought, well, maybe he's just doing a surprise pop-in regarding the Iguana Entertainment Group for um, NBA Jam. And then, of course, we learned that that's actually more of a port that was made by Midway. So it really didn't have anything to do with Iguana. So so we hadn't. So there would have been no reason for Jordan to even been exactly, there. Exactly, yeah. But to me, it's like, I don't care. If he's there, I want a picture with the guy. Or at least take one of myself, you know? So... Or at least you can say, or at least you could say, I talked to Michael Jordan. Yeah, or something. yeah. Or if I shook his hand, I mean, you know, I don't know if he's uh, into that or. Manny, Manny, be like, I'll never wash this hand again. <laughs> <laughs> or if I can give him my business card, even if he throws it away. He just, he just puts it in his pocket. And his pocket has a mini business card shredder in the back. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, uh, no, that pretty much sums it up for you. I just had a great experience. And glad to be part of it. Oh, one one word to summarize the to uh, summarize the trip, Vanita. Oh, <laughs> good folks, to Vanita, Oklahoma. Did, Tommy, did we, did I talk about what happened to in Oklahoma? Uh, no, you did not. All right, so me and Manny were driving back. We were super freaking exhausted. We had literally gotten like three hours of sleep at max uh, the night before, and we were trying to drive back. And so the deal was, hey, let's drive as long as we can till. Uh, we just can't do anything for it. So we stopped in Venita, Oklahoma, which was in about an hour outside of Joplin, Missouri. Something like that. All right. And oh, yeah. um, right. and then we, so we stopped. It was just like, oh, let's find inns. And we couldn't find a hotel or an inn. There was a Holiday Inn, but they told us that literally, they literally charged $100 a night. Oh, yeah. Jeez. As expected. So we're just like, okay, where do we go? Just, so we... Uh, we start. We find this place called Vanita Inn, and it looked shady as fuck. <laughs> it really did. It, 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 it looked. It looked really like this. Look, this made Detroit look good. Oh wow. This made this made yeah. East St. Louis look like paradise. It was. It looked bad. There and like there were, and then we got out of our car and I approached these three like these three four guys and a girl and. The guys had no teeth, and I could tell they were passing something around. So I'm summarizing they were either crack or meth heads. Jeez. 
and 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 they were all Indian, too. Uh, what I mean, na- Indian, Native American. That's uh-huh. you know yeah. that whole that whole thing. Yeah, the feather nut. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's awful. Oh, man. And it, anyways, uh, so I asked them. It's just like, hey, where can we find like a hotel to stay at? And this is literally how the guy sa- sounded. He approached the car, put his hand on the windshield, and looked at Manny and me and said. All right, you're going to go about down that intersection over there, take a left, and go about three miles down that way. Uh, you're going to go past this end called Route 66 N. You're going to go past it. Don't go there. And you're going to find a place called Relax It's a good end. That's oh. literally how he sounded. <laughs> <laughs> and his handprint. I'm positive. It's- his handprint was on the fucking car. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what he had on his hand or what his hand is made of, but it stuck to the car. Oh, it's yes. The handprint was on the car, on the windshield, the whole way back yeah. until we got the car washed. Power washed, yeah. That <laughs> had to give it to work. It was ridiculous. <laughs> it was scary, and yeah. <laughs> like Manny, like Manny's like, you can be all right. I'm like, dude, I got this. As soon as I saw what was going on, I'm like, I don't got this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was driving, and I was like, still, you know, Corey's like, just make keep the engine running. <laughs> and I'm like, good point. <laughs> Get the bailout, guns flying, bullets flying. I mean, but th- this happens on a daily basis with me and Manny. We just never know what's going to happen. Oh, great, Corey! Now I'm going to be like, oh, nothing but trouble, those two. <laughs> oh, the- <laughs> them overshield boys are nothing but trouble. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that'll make a great series right there, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, it is time to. Uh, move on to uh, fuck. Where were we? Oh yes, <laughs> people doing stupid shit. All right, hit the music. <laughs> yeah, that was terrible. <laughs> so awful, people. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I have two stories. Mm-mm. Two. I can only find two. This was pretty. Uh, uh, this was a weak week. <laughs> I imagine so. Yeah. Hmm. So when you go to Taco Bell and you expected to get food, but you didn't get food, what do you think that thing might be? Um, a purple dildo. Oh, oh god. god! I hope not. Because I just pl- I was playing Saints Row recently. Oh, okay. uh, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> Okay, what if I said this is a really positive thing you got instead of food? Was it money? Yes. <laughs> really? Yes. It just, it's like, hell, we forgot about your tacos, so here's a, some $100 bills. <laughs> Three people who ordered food at Taco Bell in the drive through in West, Western Michigan got something more valuable. $3,600 in cash. What? Yes. Oh. Why the hell couldn't that happen to us, Manny? Why the <laughs> hell couldn't that have happened to us? Drug deal gone wrong? I mean, come on. <laughs> no, a Taco Bell... Yeah, they were, it, it, the taco sauce got lost in the exchange, <laughs> yeah. man. A Taco Bell employee mistakenly passed the cash to the trio instead of their food Saturday. Um, the money was returned short time later. They returned the money. They didn't keep it. Hey, kudos to them. Holy yeah, cow. The, uh, yeah, the, the trio thought about keeping it, but then they would feel guilty if they didn't, so um, they returned it, yeah. Okay, okay, question. Let's say if you're going through a Taco Bell, I mean, like, okay, money is a little different, but I'm thinking, like, whoever's gone through the drive through you order something, and they accidentally give you more food than you ordered, you don't go back and, like, say, hey, you guys gave me one too many tacos. You're like, shit, I guess I get an extra taco. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because if you return it, they would probably just throw that food away. So that would it would have gone to waste. Yeah, so if you return the money, it's going to go to waste. Well, it was going to go to the <laughs> bank. That money, <laughs> the money that was accidentally sent to them was supposed to be go shipped to a bank because the money was in a bag was, already. Was the ba- if, it was, if, if the bank was Bank of America, then it was going to be a waste. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I went there. You went there. Okay. So uh, my second story... How much do you think a finger painting picture is worth? Um, I'm gonna say if it was done by like Andy Warhol, 
No, they're five three, year olds. They're kindergarten. Three bucks. Three bucks. Three bucks. Three bucks. I'd say okay. five. Five bucks. All right. And he's more generous. Yeah. <laughs> well, wealthy parents are suing the school, claiming that they were scammed into buying a fifty thousand dollar finger painting picture. What the fuck? Whoa! What? <laughs> how, do you, how do you spend fifty grand on a piece of art and not look at it and go, "Huh, this looks like it was done by a five-year-old." <laughs> <laughs> a pair of Manhattan uh, <laughs> parents are suing a private school for nearly half a million dollars after it was allegedly tricked them into bidding fifty thousand dollars for a finger painting done by kindergartens. Yeah. <laughs> it must have been Chinese kindergartners, then, because that must have been a damn good finger painting. <laughs> First of all, a finger painting. I would even, like I said, maybe three or five dollars, but not even worth fifty thousand dollars. Holy cow! And now they're suing for half a million. The parents. I mean, they're just dumbasses to begin with for just paying that much money. They're they're dumbasses with too much money. Exactly. Yeah. It's the Paris Hilton family. Yeah. And plus, it's for a school, <laughs> so why would you even sue the school then afterwards? It's like, ah, oh, they're stupid. I'm gonna take away your textbook money! Exactly! How stupid of them. It's just like, you know, it's like... Who, ever, who here has ever seen, like, those, like, those... Those movies where there's like a like a rich guy who's like the villain. He's like dressed in the suit and got a cigar. He's just like, it's like you kids are never going to get your desks. <laughs> 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 why am I picturing his suit white? <laughs> That's what I was thinking. That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> Played by John Goodman. Oh. <laughs> oh. It's the story of a rich man who's trying to ruin a school, but one five-year-old won't stand his crap anymore. <laughs> he paints the ultimate finger painting. <laughs> you know you can wear white after Labor Day, sir. <laughs> No, no, not funny? Okay. Aw. Nice. <laughs> yeah, so that's all I have. Wow. That was really good. <laughs> Thank you, I guess. That was one of the better people doing stupid shits we've had in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, it's time to move on to our final segment, which is shout outs. All right. I'll go first. My shout out goes to my current favorite game, which is actually rather hard to find right now. And that is Conquer's Bad Fur Day for the N64. And the reason I say this is hard to find, it did not sell well. I did some research. Conquer's Bad Fur Day sold only 50,000 carts. Jeez. It was a financial disaster for Rare. And it was the last game they ever made for Nintendo. So, I, don't, I think it's kind of a priceless treasure, in my opinion. I think it's funny as hell, even to this day. If, like, if you grew up in the 80s, 90s, you deserve, you owe it to yourself to play Conker's Bad Fur Day. Specifically the N64 version, because the Xbox version is so heavily censored. Which is a shame, and I don't get it, too, because mm -hmm. the Xbox yeah. is... No, yeah. funny thing is, I did some digging on this game. I found out they were work they were actually working on a sequel. It was called Conquer's Other Bad Day, and it was going to be a sequel until they got um, purchased by Microsoft, and Microsoft told them cancel it. If you were wondering what the plot was, Conquer has some problems as king, and he spends all the money, all the treasury, on went on hookers, parties, and beer. And so because of it, he gets thrown in jail and is waiting to be executed, but he escapes from jail and his adventure starts there. Oh, jeez. Mm. Yes. This game's getting worse. But I like JonTron's idea. It's just like, it's like what, would, what would Conquer do next? I don't fucking know. Conquer does PCP and ends up in another wacky world. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but I, it's, I think it's just one of those funny games because you look at it and it has that cutesy, rare look to it. But then the characters start to speak. And it's just like, wow, that's a little dark, or that was a little crude, <laughs> or holy sh did they just say shit? 
This is it, it kind of like as a kid when I played this, I played this for the first time at a friend's house when I was 10. No, I was a 10. I'm sorry. I was 12. Um, and this game really surprised me because I was not expecting any of that. And it kind of holds a, f a firm place in my heart. So if you can find it, um, if not, there's always the ROMs. I mean, it's not like you're violating copyright. Pretty sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Like, I'm pretty sure the deal with ROMs is, is like, as long as they is the company can, is not making money on it, then it, I don't think it matters. So, like, if you get the N64 cart downloaded to your computer, um, doesn't fucking matter because you can't download this. You can't get this game anywhere. Like now, now if you were doing like Mario Kart 64, which is still being sold, there's a problem. But I'm not, I'm not con condemning or condoning it. Um, even though I do do it, I do know it's bad. It's it's wrong to use emulators according to the hardcore church. Um, but I don't give a fuck. All right. <laughs> Moving on. Your shout out. Who, me or Manny? Uh, fight. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll... Fight go. over it, go. <laughs> um, if you don't mind, I can go ahead and jump in on this one, Tommy. No, just go right ahead, Manny. Alright. So, my shout-out. Last weekend, um, I spent four days over in Jeff City, Missouri. Um, they had their first cosplay convention ever, or even convention of that scale. And it was the first convention ever. Yeah, pretty much. It was the first large <laughs> gathering in Jefferson City history. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And um, at first when I saw their hotel, I thought it would be a sad state of affairs. But I was pleasantly was like surprised. And uh, their turnout, which, funny enough, they were afraid that it would be under 600 attendees for the entire weekend, was well over 1,000. They said, you know, maybe uh, 1,000 and a half even. So, which, for Jeff City, that's like their entire city. But <laughs> what was interesting, though, is they actually had people coming all the way up from, like, New York and California and even Texas. So, it's like... Where the hell did you meet those Exactly. People? And I'm like, more importantly, why would you come all the way, you know, Midtown? Why would you Midway? come all the way to Jefferson exactly. City? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. To a, to a cosplay convention. Yeah. Maybe they came for the same reasons I did, which was good Chinese restaurants. But... Uh, Anyways, um, maybe that McDonald's that was down the road that was all right. Yeah, uh, my shout out. Well, I'm like, to... uh, I was just gonna say this. Sorry, Tommy. What we're talking about is the capital of Missouri. It is literally there's nothing there. There's there's the Capitol building, the governor's mansion, little pieces of downtown, uh, an airport that nobody fucking uses, and that's really it. Mm. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing in that town. Yeah. And since we live in Columbia, which is just a little bit north, and we got everything that they don't, we kind of shit on Jefferson City. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So anyways, so. I guess what I'm trying to get at is um, because of the excellent turnout, but partly what made it so was this is the first convention where I truly felt like the staff put in a thousand percent. Not only in, you know, just making the people feel good about themselves attending the event, but also, for example, since they were using kind of a lower scale hotel, there were certain rooms that were just plain saunas. So to help alleviate that, um, they brought in, you know, free water to everyone and just really, you know, going the extra 10 miles, making sure everyone was happy. And they did. And that's why they're doing it again for next year. So really kudos to those guys for putting their hearts out on the line and making sure everyone's having fun and really making a memorable experience. So that'd be it for me. All right, so I guess my shout out will have to be. Um, I honestly got nothing. I don't. I honestly don't know who to give a shout out to. You can't shout out Jessica again. I know. You've already I'm done. You've already to. done that. I've already done that. She's in Italy, so I mean, she's having a time of her life. Where the hell is she in Italy? For school. She's Asian. What do you think? That makes no sense. Holy cow. She's studying abroad for the summer. Yes, but why would an Asian go to Italy? Because why Italy's wouldn't you go cool? to Italy? Yeah. Good question. Well, I do know the Italians are kind of dicks, but well, moving she's on. She's in Florence. It's a touristy place. I mean. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
don't know. I'm just going off of this fa- the stories from my family. They said the people of Greece and Italy, they, they lead you the wrong direction to places and stuff like that, just to make fun of you. Well, I mean, she's with us, with the, her school, her classmates, so I think, I, well, they're fine. They have, like, a a system. So, a whole, so in the newspaper, whole group of students gets lost in the mountains of Italy. I really hope not. They were given, they were given, they were given the wrong directions. <laughs> Come on, they were, they live in the city where Ezio the Tori was born. Come on, they're fine. So they're living in a city of assassins. <laughs> yes. They'll be safe. That makes it a lot safer. They will be safe. <laughs> They're better off with the assassins than the Templars, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Come on, you know it, Corey. They're safe. I can't believe we're talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so let's just give a shout out to the Etia the Tori for being a badass assassin. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Do, who here remembers the, the story that, that uh, Ubisoft made for promotion purposes? A profile for Ezio Auditore on Match.com, and people actually bought into it, and they got requests to date him. No, I did not even hear this. This is true. It is. <laughs> it's really true. Like people are like, "Oh my God, it's an Italian. It's an older Italian man who likes all this stuff." I shall say, let's contact him, even not knowing that he's fake or that the picture they put up is a CG face. <laughs> <laughs> So, anyways, that's the end of shoutouts, and it's the end of Pixels and Bits, episode 36. My name is Corey. And I'm Tommy. And I'm Manny. And we'll see you all next week, folks. Bye. Laters. Woo.